As dawn broke on the 6th of August 1945, the streets of Japan were alive with the sounds of a regular working day. Sellers cried out about their products. Office staff rushed past in a blur. Children played along their school route, their laughter piercing the stillness of the morning. Yet, beneath this routine hustle and bustle lay the fear of an impending disaster. Despite the unsettling times, Japan was in the grip of World War II. Life carried on. It was a time of sacrifices. People were used to standing in long lines for everyday items. A typical Japanese family in the city had to make do with much less food than they needed. But what weighed heavily on people's minds was the war. Many had lost loved ones. By August of 1945, government reports stated that over 2.1 million Japanese soldiers had died in battle. Every life lost added to the growing fear and sadness among the people. News of the war dominated radio broadcasts and dinner table talks. Despite the despair, people clung to a thin thread of hope like a tiny candle flickering in the darkness. That day, Japan was on the edge, not knowing that a life-altering event was just around the corner. While life in Japan was filled with a quiet unease, thousands of miles away, a group of strategists was about to make a decision that would shatter the lives of these unsuspecting people. A special committee, tasked with selecting the targets for the atomic bomb, was silently plotting a course of events that would indelibly mark the pages of history. Formed in April of 1945, this team was an assemblage of military personnel and scientists. Their job was to choose locations that would demonstrate the raw power of the newly developed atomic bomb to its fullest. For this, they set out certain criteria. The targets needed to be large urban areas, filled with people and infrastructure. They had to be strategically located between Tokyo and Nagasaki, and their destruction would ideally need to deal a significant blow to Japan's ability to wage war. The initial list, drawn up in May, contained 17 potential targets. Tokyo, Japan's bustling capital, was on this list, alongside many other cities of cultural, industrial, and military significance. However, as discussions proceeded, the list began to shrink. Certain factors such as the risk to American prisoners of war, potential for effective damage assessment, and lastly, psychological impacts on the enemy began to take precedence. Slowly but surely, the list of 17 potential targets was whittled down to just four. The capital city of Tokyo, once a prime candidate, remained on the edge, its fate yet to be unveiled. Why were Hiroshima and Nagasaki chosen over the larger cities of Osaka and Tokyo? It was a matter of size, yes, but there were other factors too. In terms of sheer size, both Osaka and Tokyo dwarfed Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Tokyo, the capital, had a population of 7.35 million in 1945. Osaka, another major hub, was home to approximately 3.15 million people. In comparison, Hiroshima and Nagasaki had populations of around 345,000 and 263,000, respectively. Yet, these smaller cities became the chosen targets. Several reasons contributed to this decision. Hiroshima was a significant military base, housing important Japanese army headquarters. Nagasaki, while not a primary military target, was a major port and had several large industrial factories. Their smaller size did not diminish their strategic importance. Thus, despite having less population density than Osaka and Tokyo, these cities were viewed as valuable targets to demonstrate the power of the atomic bomb. Although Hiroshima and Nagasaki were deemed significant targets, there was another city that, despite its cultural wealth, was initially on the shortlist. Kyoto. Nestled in the heart of Japan, Kyoto was more than just a city. It was a living, breathing testament to Japan's rich history and traditions. Home to more than 2,000 temples and shrines, including 17 UNESCO World Heritage Sites, Kyoto was an invaluable repository of Japanese cultural heritage. Yet, it was precisely this richness that would spare it from the devastation of the atomic bomb. While Kyoto was spared due to its cultural importance, Dresden, a city in Germany, was not so fortunate. In February of 1945, Dresden suffered a fate that would serve as a stark reminder for those deciding the targets of the atomic bombings in Japan. This city was the victim of an intense firebombing campaign by Allied forces. Once a stunning example of cultural grandeur, Dresden was reduced to ashes within mere days. The city that stood today is practically a replica, built from the rubble of its past, a testament to the immense destruction it experienced. 
the relentless bombing claimed the lives of an estimated 25,000 people, turning the city into a sea of flames and debris. In the aftermath of this devastation, Sir Arthur Harris, the head of Britain's Bomber Command, defended the bombing in a controversial speech. He said the aim of the combined bomber offensive should be unambiguously stated as the destruction of German cities, the killing of German workers, and the disruption of civilized life throughout Germany. Despite being oceans apart, the fates of Dresden and Tokyo were strikingly intertwined, each city bearing its own scars from the devastating impact of war. Before the determinations of the atomic bombings were even on the horizon, Tokyo, Japan's bustling capital, was already a city bearing the brunt of relentless warfare, heavily bombarded and burnt out. In the run-up to August of 1945, Tokyo had been subjected to massive destruction from persistent conventional bombings. The worst of these occurred in March of 1945, a firebombing incident that led to the tragic loss of an estimated 100,000 lives and leveled about a quarter of the city. The city lay in ruins, its once vibrant infrastructure a shadow of its former self, its people enveloped in the gloom of devastation. The committee, recognizing that dropping an atomic bomb on an already ravaged city wouldn't fully demonstrate the novel weapon's horrifying power, decided to exclude Tokyo from the target list. In a cruel twist of fate, Tokyo's severe suffering became its saving grace, shielding it from the forthcoming atomic horror. While Tokyo's extensive damage ironically exempted it from nuclear annihilation, US War Secretary Henry Stimson brought a fresh perspective into the narrative. As an instrumental figure in the decision-making process, Stimson harbored two main reservations that he laid out before President Truman. The first worry stemmed from a moral perspective. If the Allies used this cataclysmic weapon, wouldn't they be seen as an equivalent to the brutality of Germany, which they sought to condemn? His second apprehension was strategic. With Japan already severely ravaged, deploying this new weapon would not demonstrate its full destructive potential on a grand scale, as there was little left to destroy. In response to Stimson's grave concerns, President Truman surprisingly chuckled, a dark reminder of the brutal nature of war, where empathy often gets lost in the pursuit of victory. Reflecting on the decisions that led to the bombings, one must consider the immense impact they had on Japan. The atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August of 1945 marked a profound turning point, the reverberations of which are still felt today. In the immediate wake of the bombings, the two cities were essentially wiped off the map. Hiroshima was the first to be hit, with the blast leveling about 5 square miles of the city and instantly claiming roughly 70,000 lives. Three days later, a similar fate befell Nagasaki, causing an immediate death toll of around 40,000. Yet the destructive aftermath didn't end there. The lingering radiation caused an increase in health complications, resulting in a further surge in deaths over the subsequent months and years. By the end of 1945, death estimates had risen to around 140,000 in Hiroshima and 70,000 in Nagasaki. More than the physical devastations, the bombings also left a lasting impact on Japan society and national consciousness. In unpacking the calculated decision that spared Tokyo but devastated Hiroshima and Nagasaki, we've seen the haunting reality of war and its aftermath. If you enjoyed this video, please support us by hitting the like button. Stay updated with our latest videos by subscribing to our channel.